and welcome back to Messy Minds, where we come to unpack and declutter our thoughts. You're joined here by your co-hosts, Mary Nguyen and Jessie Chow. On today's show, Jessie is actually calling in remotely from Adelaide with our special guest for today, Michelle. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be on with the Messy Minds girls. So I guess we can start off by talking about how we actually know each other. I don't actually really remember how we met. Um, how do you recall the memory? <laughs> well, Jesse, I don't know if you actually remember this, but we went to high school together. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy <laughs> shit. I, I thought about it. I thought about it. I was like, oh, it must have been when we were working. But I was like, oh, I actually knew of you beforehand. Really? So that's when we went to school together. But I only went for one one term so I don't really talk about it too much <laughs> was that in year seven or what like- no it was year I think I arrived in year nine um so long story short I was really rebellious in high school in year eight um I was like wagging school having lots of fun not focusing on my study so my parents thought it'd be a good idea to send me to a catholic all girl school <laughs> and exactly that's where <laughs> I went and um that's where jesse was and then i don't know if we really met no, I don't, we definitely were not friends 100 yeah. percent. you were too cool for me no i can confirm guys <laughs> michelle was too cool to be my friend no but i think we met at like one of the parties no 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 i um yeah <laughs> It was, I won't say her name, but it starts with the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, I would like to, like, make a little story time out of this. <laughs> because I remember meeting Mish at this, this girl's birthday party. It was a 16th birthday party, now that you've jogged my memory. And I was with my best friend at the time. And we weren't really close with the girl who's mm. who we got invited to. And this is a little bit illegal, but we were underage drinking. <laughs> and... So we're at the 16th birthday party, and this is the first time I've ever touched alcohol in my life. And me and my best friend were kind of just, like, chilling in a corner, like, with our freaking cruises, thinking that we're, like, top shit. And this little bubbly <laughs> ball of energy comes coming over, who's obviously also not sober. And she's just like, hi! And I was like, holy crap. I'm like, who is this person? She was just really energetic, super bubbly. And she was like, you were, like, trying to make friends with us. Oh, you're just introducing yourself, really. You're yeah. just like saying hi. Do you remember that? Do you know why no. I was wanted to be? I wanted to be friends with you. No. It's because back in the day, Jesse was Tumblr famous. No, it wasn't okay. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Guys, I just want to talk about that for a second. That, that, that was like, oh my god, Jesse Chow, the Tumblr girl. Oh my god. Actually, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Guys, I was famous and I didn't even know it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> wow. So I was cool enough to be a Michelle Trans fan, but she just didn't want to be my friend. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I think that's the first time we probably met, but we didn't actually, like, form a friendship out no, of it, though. No, I think I never spoke to you again after that. Yeah, because I moved schools <laughs> again. Because, like, okay, honestly, like, when you first said hi to me, I was, like, I was really genuinely confused as whether or not that interaction was a genuine interaction. Because I just thought you were just too nice. And I've never met anybody that nice in my life before. And I was like, I just feel like maybe she was drunk or something. And she was just, like, in the mood <laughs> to, like, chat people up. So I just never thought too much about it. And then, yeah, the girl disappeared. I'm just I'm just a nice person. She really is, guys. I can vouch Michelle for Michelle is the equivalent of the girls that you meet at the bathroom club. Like, <laughs> I know. The club that tells bathroom. you not to call the, your ex-boyfriend because you're better yeah. than that. But she's not drunk. She's not tipsy. She's just like that in real life. Yeah. Outside <laughs> of the club. No, yeah, just think about that. But in a person without the alcohol. <laughs> guys just a great emotional support really so obviously that was the first time you guys had met but you guys didn't become friends so when did you actually become friends yeah so we actually all three of us so you know with you us three we all worked together so we all met and actually became friends at work at work at that place at that shop that we would not name (laughs) Um, so we were, yep, all, all in retail. So I think, yeah, we were all working at the same store for yeah, a while yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think Mary, you left relatively shortly after I joined. Yeah. I yeah. think I had been there for like three, two, three years. And then you had just joined as a casual, I think. Yeah, um, that's right. And then, yeah, I had just moved on. So 
Yeah. yeah. I think I honestly, I think the first time I had ever met you, I just recall you were dating someone that we also worked with. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you came to visit on your lunch break and that's the first time we ever like met you. We were like, who's this bubbly child that just walked into the <laughs> store? It's like a sunshine, like a ray of sunshine just beamed into the store oh, as yeah. you walked right in between the um, the rails. And then, yeah, we were, well, I was just like, is this person real? <laughs> it's like, yeah. this person is a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right, with Mary. So I met you before I started that, jo- um, that yeah. job. But because you worked with my ex at the time, oh, no, yeah. my boyfriend at the time, who's now my ex. But um, yeah. And so I used to come in and visit on lunch breaks because I also used to work in the city too. And mm. I think that's how you and I met and we started talking. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously uh, time has moved on and I haven't seen you like since yes. maybe after I left that job or actually I, th- I think I may have seen you once or twice after that, but um, we live on very different sides of the city and now you live in a completely different city. So I haven't yeah. seen you since, but um, I do hear that you guys do catch up very often. So it's like I'm vicariously living it, <laughs> living the hangouts like, through Jesse. I expect <laughs> Jesse to feed the information back to you anyway. Yeah, no. We're like one person, you know, if it goes to me, it goes to her. There's no secrets here. We just briefly touched on the fact that you've me- moved to a completely different uh, city and since you've left retail, you've actually achieved quite a fair bit. Um, I have seen you sort of grow in the last couple of years and I'm so proud of how far you've come. Aww, so that thanks. is why we have got you onto this podcast so that you can talk about all the things that you have achieved as the lovely person that you have become in your mid-twenties. So, so I guess for today's mm-hmm. icebreaker question, it's going to be what was the worst movie you've seen? Or a bad movie, if you can't think of the worst one. Just a bad one in general. I actually thought about this, and I can't think of anything off the top of my head that that I'm like, oh my god, that was the worst movie I've seen. But the most recent movie I watched that I really didn't like was called The Guilty. And it's a crime thriller with Jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, just the whole time I was watching it, I was like, Oh, like I was so angry because, you know, we're just screaming through the TV because they're just Mm. not doing what they should be doing. Like the answer is so easy. The solution is so easy. And you are taking so long, a whole movie length time (laughs) to sort your shit out. Get it together, sis. I actually quite enjoyed that movie. I enjoyed that movie. No, crime. Really? Yeah. No, I think I was just so impatient. (laughs) <laughs> and his frustrating like I just feel like he was just projecting his frustration onto yeah. the audience <laughs> Jesse what's your what's your worst movie that you've ever seen um one of the really or a bad movie or a really bad movie <laughs> that I've seen that I still talk about this day is The Mummy who was starred by Tom Cruise I've actually never seen that movie so. you don't, yeah so I so I honestly don't really care about Tom Cruise or mummy movies to be honest but the, the backstory of why I went to go watch this movie is because it was actually my first date with my partner Aww. So it was like one of the first dates and there was just nothing showing at the time and this was just the best thing that we had and you know like Tom Cruise right like how bad how bad mm. could it be so we're going to watch this movie and I'm like, holy crap, this is like the worst movie I've ever, I've actually paid to go see. Like the, the storyline <laughs> is shit, the acting is shit, but like at the same time, the man's just trying to like make a move on me. So he's like trying to like put his arm around me and shit. I'm like, oh, this is the part where I have to act scared. Oh my God. Like so intense. Let me like, <laughs> oh, let me oh grab God. your arm because of all the suspense. But in my head, I was like, holy shit. I am like so not scared right now. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and like I think we were both trying to play it off like how bad the movie was just out of like respect because <laughs> it's a first date and oh, we're trying to hit on each other but then like we reflect back to it now I'm like dude that was the shittiest movie <laughs> in my life and I totally faked the entire I'm so scared this is so suspenseful <laughs> like oh this is a jump scare oh my god it's so scary hold on to me <laughs> so oh my goodness. um I know it's tragic. I was like, we should totally rewatch that movie for shits and gigs for the memes, you know? No, <laughs> for, don't, just don't. <laughs> but yeah, I think PTSD. that movie. <laughs> literally, I think that movie really turned me off. Um, Tom Cruise, but he really redeemed himself with Maverick. So I forgive him. I that was an incredible. <laughs> 
Top Gun was an incredible movie. I think it was like one of the best movies I've seen this year. Mm. Um, but speaking of bad movies, mine. So I don't generally watch movies that are like bad. Like I don't remember bad movies because I, I kind of erase that memory mm. from my brain yeah. for better things, you know. Um, but the recent, the most recent movie that I've watched and paid for to go watch was Jackass, and <laughs> I had never seen Jackass in my entire life, okay? Get this. And so my partner was like, oh, Jackass 4 is out. Let's go and see Jackass 4 at the movies. And I'm like, oh, you know, Jackass seems like a comedy or something. I didn't yeah. actually look up the trailer. <laughs> and oh, I don't no. know why. Like, why would anyone pay to watch this movie, first of all? <laughs> Who's funding like, this production? Did, did you know? So you had no idea what you were in for I then? Had, no, I had no idea what I was walking into. And it was, oh, I no. was just squirming the whole time because I don't know how people find other people's pain funny. Like, like just watching people get injured or like purposely yeah. injured or throwing themselves and humiliating themselves funny. But he was just cackling the whole time. And I was like... <laughs> I can't believe I'm dating you. <laughs> yeah. Trauma. Don't do it, guys. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do not watch Jackass. I think it is a terrible series. Um, yeah. It's it's definitely male humor. That that's all I have yeah, to say. Yeah. I was gonna say it seems like it's very like boy humor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we'll jump into today's um topic. I guess we would Mary already kind of delved into that a little bit. We kind of wanted to talk to Mishy about her experience moving out of what you like to call the Melbourne bubble, quote unquote, and, um, you know, what that experience was like and how it is so far. And especially because you made that decision to move during a pandemic, which kind of makes Mm. it quite special and quite different to, to a regular move. So I guess, do you want to start off by introducing yourself again, like, properly to to everybody and talk about, like, you know, (laughs) who you are? Who is Michelle? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, well, my (laughs) name is Michelle. Um, Yeah, so I recently moved to Adelaide from Melbourne. Um, I moved maybe almost, it's been almost a year now, so I moved in August last year. I don't know what what else there is to say about me. What did you study? Oh, yeah. So I am actually finishing off my degree at the moment. Mm. So I did a Bachelor of um, Science and then Mm. now I'm just finishing off my Master's of Public Health, um, specializing in epidemiology and biostatistics. So I studied health. But my work at the moment is actually in technology consulting. So you can imagine they're, <laughs> they're kind of different, but I'm trying to merge those two into one at the moment. Mm. Yeah. So do you want to kind of start off by talking about, you know, like why you decided to move or like, you know, how you came to this situation of you moving like an interstate? Yeah. So it was actually really like I did not decide to move. It was so spontaneous really so basically what <laughs> happened was at the start like, if you had asked me at the start of 2021 Mish what are your plans for this year moving interstate moving out of home and moving to Adelaide was definitely no. not on the cards for me <laughs> at all so basically what happened was at my previous job that I was working at I was working there for a while um and Basically, one day I was just really angry. They had pissed me off at work and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start looking for other jobs. And because I hadn't (laughs) applied for jobs, I I, I had no experience in applying for jobs, especially these days as well. Everything needs like a group interview, like you need a really Mm. bomb cover letter. I haven't done any of that stuff for like three years. So I just went on. I was like, I'm just going to search for other jobs. And I came across this one job that said um, Adelaide and to start like Mm. ASAP. And I kind of was just like, just did it anyway. Cause I was like, oh, Adelaide, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to apply because I doubt I'll get it anyway, but just for the experience yeah. of applying for jobs. And so next thing you know, I actually got through to the next stage and I was like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> I, I got through to the next stage. And I was like, should I, should I actually like try for this? And then so I got through to the next stage and then another next stage of interviews. And then all of a sudden they offered me a job and they were like, we would really love for you to move to Adelaide. We'll pay for you to move to Adelaide. Oh, and also, can you start like next month? And I was, <laughs> and, and at that time, Melbourne had just gone into lockdown. 
So like number six or something ridiculous. Yeah, like that. it was yeah. a three month so, one, right? So it wasn't like the the two week ones. It was like one of those mm, long three month. Yeah, ones. and so I was like, oh, uh, okay. So you want me to move to Adelaide and start work in in four weeks? Um, and they were like, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. And I was just like, oh, you know what? Is it possible to delay the start date just because I have to like, you know move cities during COVID (laughs) and she was like you know what so fine yeah so ended up pushing it back a little bit so I had a bit more time well I actually realistically only had about five or six weeks to kind of get it all together so yeah so it all kind of just happened and I just remember distinctly that day I was in my car and it was a phone call and as soon as I got the got off the phone I was just like oh my god I'm moving to Radelaide. <laughs> it's happening, guys. It's happening. Yeah. So it wasn't a plan. Um, it sort of just happened all at once and it happened so quickly. Mm. Yeah. Was it scary? Like the initial, obviously, it was. It took you a little bit longer to sort of process the whole thing. But how did you start actually like moving to Adelaide? Like what did you have to do to actually get yourself there? Did you like pack a car full of stuff or did you just pack a suitcase and that was it I um I (laughs) Mary do you I don't know if your family does this but when you travel to Vietnam does your family pack cardboard boxes like not a suitcase but like cardboard boxes and put stuff in there to maximize the weight yes Yes. yeah that's what I did (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) I didn't drive down so I ended up packing like I think it was only 60 kilos of luggage on a plane and and that was it. Yeah. 60 kilos is quite a fair bit of stuff. Really? Though. I don't know. If you to, if I had to move my fucking life, I think I'd need like over 100 kilos. <laughs> I I mean, I wouldn't move everything. Mm. I'd move all the clothes that I would need, like wear on a on a, you know, regular basis or whatever. And I would assume that because you're I don't know if you in Adelaide what the lockdown rules were or if they had like proper lockdown but did you have to work in an office or were you working from home Um, for the majority of the time? Yeah so pretty much I had to start work on a Monday and it was two weeks of training that was all going to be online and I had moved to Adelaide on the Sunday and because I was under the impression that I had to be in the office after the two weeks of training and so for me I want I timed my because when I moved to Adelaide I had to quarantine for two weeks so mm. those two weeks of quarantine was also my two weeks of work training online, online at home. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, and then I have to go into the office straight away. I've been here for nine, 10, 11 months now. I've been in the office three times. <laughs> so you could have worked from Melbourne. I moved to <laughs> Adelaide to work from home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah see that's why I'm like you don't I think 60 kilos is a lot of clothes because really I'd be wearing my pajamas the whole time oh it was honestly <laughs> the most random assortment of things so it was my clothes but it was also like pots and pans as well it was mm. tea towels it was a bunch of random things because at the same time you have to remember that I I'm going straight into quarantine so I need my bare essentials like your like soaps and all these other random things just to kind of survive for the two weeks because I can't leave the apartment at all yeah Yeah. that's true I would have thought that maybe someone would have like dropped it off for you just (laughs) be like ah I have to go into quarantine so you drop it off (laughs) well the quarantine store so basically I actually got really lucky so I'll tell you the story about how I actually, like the panic that kind of struck in to actually moving. I was kind of like, oh crap, it's two weeks of quarantine. I have to find a place to live, but also we're in lockdown and I have to move in four weeks. So I was panicking a lot because I was like, oh my God, I don't want to be homeless. So, um, <laughs> and the one of the issues I had was that um, for rental properties in Adelaide, because Adelaide wasn't in lockdown at the time and Melbourne mm-hmm. was, was that you actually have to do an in-person inspection for them to actually consider you for a rental property. And oh, I couldn't no. do that because I was in Melbourne lockdown. So I found a listing um, in the city, just an apartment in the city in Adelaide and I I basically just sent an email to the agent just charming the shit out of her and just being like, I really love this apartment. I'll pay upfront right now. The photos are enough. I don't even need to see it in person. Let's lock this in. 
and that was it. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you go. Number one tip for anyone who <laughs> wants to move, just charm the pants off agent. Exactly. <laughs> I'll proofread your email for you. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? Like, obviously, when, when you had to tell your family and friends, how was their reaction? Because coming from a Vietnamese background, uh, I can already imagine your parents being like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> well, my dad was actually in denial about it. So that kind of delayed the process of, of me getting my shit together because I needed his assistance. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so for family, I actually only told my pa- I actually didn't tell many people when I was moving. Um, so with my family, my mom accepted it. She was like, yeah, I knew you'd get the job. Cause I had told them about the interview process and mm-hmm. that it was in Adelaide. And so when I told my dad that I got the job in Adelaide, he was just like, no, no, <laughs> you're, you're not moving. And I gave it a week for him to marinate in his emotions. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, dad. Um, you know, we should really start planning my move. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess so. And he just was just still wasn't accepting it. <laughs> and then it kind of got up to like a three week, two to three week lead up. And I was like, I really need to buy a washing machine and I don't know how to buy one. Like I'm begging you to help <laughs> me help, because my apartment also doesn't have a fridge, dad. And you have to understand, I can't be in quarantine for two weeks without a fridge. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when he was like, oh, true. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's have a look. Then. Yeah. Let me pull some oh, strings for you. <laughs> I honestly like, I'm a type A person and I know Jesse is too. We would be planning forever, but I did not even consider the fact that you'd have to be in quarantine for two yeah. weeks and not have any appliances. Like I would have thought that the apartment that you walked in would have been fully furnished with, you know, like a fridge. And yeah. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, oh, a fridge, microwave, kettle. Yeah, they'll have that stuff. Yeah, like no. I'm just assuming like Airbnb style, you know, so – was that an option for you, like hiring an Airbnb for a couple of weeks and then potentially moving? I don't know. It just would have been too expensive, I think. Like, I think I just wanted to secure one place to live and just go mm. for it. Like, I think I was just in too much of a rush to properly look at all my options. But it mm. ended up working quite well for me anyway. Because I actually remember when you told me that you were moving. And, like, <laughs> and okay, so Michelle's a busy person, right? So... We tried to, like, I just get her to squeeze me in wherever she can. And she's like, so, Jessie, um, I, I have to work today, but um, would you be available for a 7 a.m. coffee? And I was like, oh, yeah. a 7 a.m. coffee? She's like, yeah, a 7 a.m. coffee. And your girl is not a morning person by any means. And the only time I ever wake up is to see Michelle. Okay, <laughs> so, so, you know, so, yeah, so that's the context. She goes, hey, let's, because we had, I hadn't seen her for, like, I think a month or two and I'm like yeah let's catch up and she's like yeah I've got some stuff to tell you I'm like oh yeah cool 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 and then so I get up at 6 a.m and I was like I fucking hate this bitch so much right now because it is pitch black (laughs) outside and it is cold and I'm gonna go see Michelle but anyway so I drive over to Michelle's house and we go to like a coffee shop nearby and I remember like saying to her in the car, I was like, why are there so many cars on the road? Like, why is there so many people? And she goes to me, Jesse, Jesse, you do you do understand it's normal for people to wake up at this time? I'm like, it is. <laughs> really? Why is the cafe like why are things even open right now? I feel like this is wrong. <laughs> but um so yeah, so we sit down in the coffee shop and you just go to me, so I'm moving to Adelaide. I'm like, so what? <laughs> I'm like, it's too early right now. I'm trying to process my coffee. Like, what is going on? I think I think it was the same time where I actually had just started this corporate role. So I think that was my news to break to yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. That was me breaking my yeah. news to you. I was like, oh, yeah, like I'll have something to tell Mish as well. And this, this bitch outdoes me by saying she's going to move to a different state. And I'm like, um, girl, I'm like too tired. It is too early for me to process this. But what the actual fuckery like how do you just decide to like pick up your life and move to a different state in like three weeks yeah well because so how yeah so with with jesse i made her i made her wake up really early and i was like you tell me about you first like catch me up on everything and then towards the end she's like wait what, what about you like what do you have to tell me and i was like oh yeah amazing <laughs> and she was like w- when and i'd be like uh, 
next month. <laughs> yeah, it was like literally like, oh, it's in like a few weeks, sis. And I was like, girl, how is this like even happening right now? Yeah. And I thought she might have just like left it to like the last second is how But no, this this girl literally decided like like a couple of days ago that she was leaving. Yeah, That's so funny. and because <laughs> at the same time, like it was half lockdown, half not in lockdown. So during the lockdown mm. phase... So during Melbourne lockdown, one of the rules was that you're allowed to go exercise with one person oh, yeah, from another um, household. But it was like within the five kilometer, yeah. like some shit like so that. So here I am just scheduling in walks with my friends. <laughs> to break the and news. And those would be the times that I was breaking the news. <laughs> Trying to be a law abiding citizen. <laughs> yeah. So I only told like, like a select out there few breaking friends. people's hearts. Yeah. <laughs> out there just like breaking they, people's they really hearts thought we were just having a cute little wholesome catch up, but it was just me being like, Oh yeah, I move next month. And because we're in lockdown, I don't know when I'm gonna see you next. <laughs> like no. Oh my god. Yeah. That was yeah. literally the last time I saw you and then you were just like gone like that. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's crazy. Like, what do you think the biggest difference is between, like, Adelaide and Melbourne? Uh, 100%, everyone will tell you the difference is definitely the nightlife, for sure. Adelaide doesn't have a nightlife. <laughs> There's none. That's yeah. the difference. Mm. But also, um, <laughs> one thing that I actually find um, really noticeable, so when I spend a really long time in Adelaide and then I come back to Melbourne, I feel like I have a bit of a culture shock. So, for example, I think one of the first times I came back to Melbourne after being in Adelaide for so long, I was with my friend Justin and we were walking to Chatty and we were inside Chatty and I was genuinely like, I had a culture shock and I was like, oh my God, Justin, there's so many young, attractive, multicultural people here. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the ocean is, is so vast. This is crazy. There's so many young, attractive people, and there's <laughs> Asians here. So. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I love that it's a culture shock, even though you've only been there for like less than a year. I know. Like oh my god! I forgot this existed it's for just, a second. I feel like when I walk around Adelaide, I rarely ever see people that are my age. Um, mm. It's just a lot of older Australians mm. in Adelaide. At least, at least in the city. I don't really go out to the suburbs that much, but at least that's just my experience with the city. Mm. Is there an Asian suburb in Adelaide? I must ask. Oh, there definitely <laughs> is. But um, just to give you context, I don't have a car, so it will be a sixty-minute bike ride for me out there. <laughs> oh my god! Because I've done it before. You actually <laughs> yeah. have. Yeah, my grandma's cousin lives out in that suburb. Oh my god! And Google Maps said it was a forty-two-minute bike ride, and I took sixty-four. <laughs> yeah, that's traumatic. Yeah. Wait, is that one way or back and forth? No, it was one way. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, <my God>. oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> so on the way back, I'm taking a car. <laughs> Yeah, so I do hear a lot that if you want, like, authentic, like, Viet food, you have to go out to the Viet suburbs, which is, I guess, is similar to Melbourne as well because, yeah. you know, everyone goes to Kingsway or everyone goes to Springvale. Um, mm, or, like, Footscray. No one ever thinks, oh, let's get pho in the CBD. <laughs> no, <laughs> let's go to Swanson Street and get a pho. <laughs> hey, man, but what's his name that something Clint no is it Bill Clinton <laughs> ate there or oh yeah some, I some saw a picture of him you, yeah, yeah 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 like he ate there okay so that that means it is good and it's authentic because the president of uh, the United States ate there I don't know how <laughs> credible Bill Clinton is with with yeah, with yeah, yeah. I'm literally, I was literally <laughs> going to say it's like I just because he's the president <laughs> I don't know if there's much credibility in <laughs> measuring how good pho is <laughs> <laughs> it's like how when you get back to Vietnam, I went to a restaurant that I think Barack Obama like ate at, and oh, they, yeah. have, they have it like plastered all over the wall, and like oh, Barack Obama ate here. No, they secured it in a glass box. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I actually do think like it's actually quite nice being in Adelaide because this is also like my first time being here. It's like a so much more quiet and serene compared to like in Melbourne, and even though like we're in the CBD, there's like nobody here. Like there's zero traffic. Right? You could, like, there's no angry people beeping each other because there's nobody in, on the roads to obstruct you anyway. The lanes are, like, massive. Like, a massive. There's so much space. <laughs> and it's just, like, it's really mind-blowing. It does feel like you're, like, in the outer suburbs. Like, that's what I feel like it's equivalent to. 
And everything's really close because it, the place is so small. Like, we haven't really had to need, like, a car because everything's, like, what, a 15, 20, 20 minute walk yeah. max. Like, if you really want to do anything, which I think has been mm. quite good for, I think, getting our steps in. <laughs> yeah. One, mm. one thing about Adelaide is that um, the, the, another difference, actually, between Adelaide and Melbourne is that in Melbourne, if you were to map anywhere, like, I would, like, want to go somewhere and I'd be like, oh, 35 minutes. Don't even worry about it. Like, easy drive. In Adelaide, I'll, like, put something in the maps. 25 minutes. Oh, strap yourself in. <laughs> it's a c- Put a putty on. We're going on a road trip. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Like, we we went to, um, was it Adelaide Hills? Yeah. We went to Handorf and we went yeah. to, like, Mount Lofty. And that was, like, what, like a, a 30 minute ride? Yeah. And, and I was like, we're in rural Adelaide. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this is like full, like, mountains and shit. But, like, usually for me, a 20 minute drive is like me going to Chadson. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that's still considered the outer suburbs. Like, I haven't even reached, like, a halfway to the city yet. I actually, I think I would really enjoy life in Adelaide because I actually am so, like, such an old person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't like people. I don't like, you know, confined spaces. So I think Adelaide would be, like, I actually have considered, I've spoken to my partner about it. I'm like, maybe we should move to Adelaide. We could afford a whole mansion you really on the hills. You really could, yeah. For the amount of, like, money that we would pay for an inner suburb house yeah. in Melbourne. So, yeah. um, you know what? Considering it. <laughs> Mez, honestly, I feel like Adelaide is really your vibe. I feel like you'd enjoy yeah. it. yeah. As long as there's an Asian suburb with my authentic Vietnamese food or access to it, yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> nah, they definitely have those there. But, like, yeah, Jesse, what are your thoughts on Adelaide since being here for the last five, five days? days? Yeah. Six? Um, I don't know if I could live here. I feel like maybe long term I would end up getting, like, missing home. Mm. Um, but I think I would, like, always come back to, like, visit you and stuff like that and hang. Because, like I said, I think it's a really good... It's like a getaway. It's like Melbourne, but on like a toned down like level. So like you still have like technically all of the stuff that you have in Melbourne, but everyone like I notice like people here don't walk very fast. Like I know this is a weird observation, but like in Melbourne, right? I feel like I'm like I I I generally think I walk pretty fast, and like everyone there is kind of at that pace because I feel like everyone's like I need to be somewhere, like like I'm not in a rush. But everyone here, like you know, takes their time, and honestly, it like really like calms me down. Like I don't feel anxious here at all. So it's like <laughs> it's like a holiday, you know. I do like every like every now and then if I'm like getting stressed out, I would just come here to just like chill, yeah, and just vibe and just yeah. like like center my like find myself, you know, like like a trip to yeah. Bali vibes, but like not as expensive. <laughs> definitely not like Bali vibes yeah, but like- guys please don't have any expectations that Adelaide is anything like Bali but you, 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 you can still find yourself you know it's just like more you know more local <laughs> a bit more domestic but um yeah but it's it is a very small town but yeah I don't know if I would move here but I would definitely just come back to like chill and stuff and we didn't get to go to the wineries and stuff because a girl is not a just not a fan of alcohol <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, you know, may- maybe I should come back to check the wineries out. But yeah. Yeah. No, next time you drive Jesse and just let Michelle drink. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can be the desert, guys. I'm fine with that. <laughs> well, in saying that, I feel like I've definitely toned down a lot since um, moving to Adelaide because in Melbourne, I used to be quite chaotic with the parties going clubbing every weekend drinking like full binge drinking whereas in Adelaide like since moving here I've definitely become a lot more introverted I don't drink as much anymore and um yeah in general I'm just not as ham joy as I used to be (laughs) is it because you don't have as many friends it's because I have no friends in Adelaide (laughs) (laughs) How has that been? How has that affected you? Obviously, you've just said that you've become more introverted, but have you tried to, I don't know, go to like a social outing or something? Like go to the club or something? Yeah, well, I I have been out. But so the thing with my social life in Adelaide is I actually discovered that I have a really big family here. Um, yeah, so I actually got really lucky. So long story short, my, um, grandma's cousin 
has a whole like extended family. It's like a copy and paste version of my current extended family in Melbourne, but there's a version in Adelaide. And um, so one of the uncles was the one who actually helped me to move in. So when I first moved into the apartment, he stocked up all my pantry um, with food to last me through quarantine, got me an air mattress, table, chair to work, everything. And my dad said to me, um, this family have lunch every Sunday. Um, I think it's worth you just going once just to say hi introduce yourself because I knew they existed but I was never really close to mm-hmm. them or anything because I don't see them often um and so my dad was like yeah just go ch- like go say hi introduce yourself and I went once to the family lunch and now they can't get rid of me and now <laughs> they call me the adopted daughter that nobody asked for and we can't get rid of <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, at least it's like you get a home cooked meal, you know. Exactly. And it kind of takes you back to home a little bit. So yeah. I guess it makes you a little bit less homesick because yeah. I, I moved out as well just right at the start of COVID. Yeah. Like right before um, you know, the pandemic happened. Mm. And I had to learn how to cook all of my, you know, Vietnamese meals because I was like, Well, now I can't see my family. Yeah. And I just want a little bit of, you know, boom boy. Yeah. And I can't I can't even go out to get it because I, it's not within my 5k radius yeah. and now I have no food. <laughs> like where am I supposed to go? So I, it's really nice that you have family there already to fall back on and sort of bring a little bit of home. Yeah, to <laughs> exactly. And because I love hanging out with them so much, they are my friends in Adelaide. Um like obviously <laughs> I've made like I've I've made friends at work, but because because I work in technology, they're all kind of like, you know, real passionate about cybersecurity. And um, so we're not, you know, we don't have too much in common, but they're really nice people yeah. that like we still hang out here and there. And they were really sweet. So when I first um, moved here and I joined, they were like, oh, once Mish gets out of quarantine, like let's take her to Barossa Valley, which is the one of the winery regions. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, we need to take her to this zoo and we need to like take her out here and there. So that was really nice of them um to take me out so I did go on a few outings with them but I wouldn't say that we're super close Mm. is there cousins and like family members that are around your age or are they all like older or what's the family dynamic like oh absolutely (laughs) not no because there are all the cousins are really young so I think the youngest cousin or the oldest cousin sorry is 16 um, but in saying that, I've gotten really close with the aunties and uncles. So, um, and for them, because they don't have a, a young adult niece, um, they yeah. thrive off invading in my life. So they're like you living know. their youth vicariously through Michelle. Yeah. So I'll tell one auntie, I'll be like, oh yeah, like I went on a date last week, and the next day it's spread around the whole family, and they're just so invasive <laughs> in my personal life, but they also love it. <laughs> It's so funny. Yeah. Are you dating in Adelaide or is that? Um. (laughs) Do we want to talk about it? (laughs) Yeah. We don't have to disclose disclose names. We can just say, you know, I've been on a couple of dates. Like, what's the dating scene like? Yeah. Is it like Melbourne? (laughs) No, I've definitely been on a few dates in Adelaide just to kind of get myself out there and, you know, new city, new dating pool and whatnot. So, yeah, it's been just having a bit of fun. Nothing to compare to Melbourne. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the issue with dating in Melbourne is that because the Asian circle, and this is part of that Melbourne bubble, is that everyone just knows each other. Everyone knows your business. Everyone knows who you've dated. Um, It's a bit incestuous in Melbourne, whereas in... (laughs) I feel like in Adelaide, it's like fresh. No one knows who I am. No one knows any of my business. So it's it's a bit easier, I think. What has been the most rewarding thing since you moved to Adelaide? Um, honestly, I think I just really love spending time with myself. I feel like I've become a lot more independent and really just enjoying that time with myself and being able to accomplish it. I feel like moving interstate by yourself in a city that you don't really know anybody is something that not everyone can do Mm. and it's definitely hard and I feel like it it definitely comes with its challenges for sure but yeah it's just rewarding knowing that I could do it and I'm there for myself and I can kind of back myself up in that. I think yeah definitely moving out is one of those things that really builds character. Yeah. I think that's like the what I like to call the turning point of your life. (laughs) It's like it's the thing that changes the entire story and it kind of 
gives you a little bit more more layers is how uh, I yeah. say it because I don't think your true self really changes it's just a little bit like it's like adding a jacket on top of your already really nice outfit, so. <laughs> it's the accessories on top yeah that's right yeah is this your first time moving like out or like living by yourself or? yeah pretty much so um first time moving out first time moving interstate and first time living by myself so mm-hmm. Bit of a triple whammy. She is. Just knock it out of the park. Yeah. Like, She's like, a high achiever. My parents were like, you couldn't move to Richmond or something. <laughs> you had to move to Adelaide. <laughs> so how did you like find, you know, managing your finances and stuff? Because obviously this is, this must have been new terrain for you. Mm. Yeah. Um. Honestly, so my work actually paid for me to move to Adelaide. Mm. And I had a decent amount of savings um, for the move as well it actually didn't really cost that much to move because all I really needed was you know to buy a fridge and a washing machine for my quarantine apartment (laughs) and um just the luggage and Mm. then everything else all the money I actually spent on just furnishing my apartment because I came into a super empty apartment and it's come a long way but it's still a work in progress I would say um so with finances at the start I think when I decided to move I accepted that I wouldn't be saving so much in this first year and Mm -hmm. I was okay with that because for me it was more about the experience yeah so what do you think the hardest thing would be like ever since moving to Adelaide like do you get homesick or Mm, so I don't think I get homesick very much because one the the good thing about Adelaide is that it's so close to Melbourne so it's quite cheap and it's only a 55 minute flight to Melbourne and I'm actually back in Melbourne pretty much every month Mm. there's always something on but oh my god I would have to say the hardest thing is being sick because (laughs) When I was at home, living at home, if I'm sick, my mum would make me congee. She would um, bring in with like the hot towels and whatnot, take care of me, bring me tea. But when I, I got sick once here in Adelaide and because I live a maybe like a 10, 10 to 15 minute walk to like the supermarket and also to chemist warehouse too, there was one time I got sick and then I was just on my deathbed, just, just lying down and I was like, I need to feed myself. And I thought about it and I was like, the only way to feed myself is if I feed myself. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, I'm sick and I don't want to eat like oily Uber Eats food. So I was like, I have to walk my ass out to Coles to get some ingredients to put something together. So I did just that and I had no energy and I was just so lethargic. Walked my ass to Coles and then I came home and then I was like, oh no the meds <laughs> had, to, <laughs> had to walk my ass out to chemist warehouse again and it was just so painful it was truly like that was the hardest thing that I had to endure was like if I want nutrition I have to give myself have nutrition <laughs> And then it's like the fact that I was because my I was just not in the right headspace. I had forgotten to also hit chemist warehouse as well. So I did like a good hour of just walking <laughs> under these health conditions. <laughs> this is not ideal, really not. It was ideal. just so not ideal when back in the day I used to just have congee made for me within the hour. And I'd be like, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> I can relate and I will let you know it never changes from here onwards. Yeah. It's, even if you're sick, your partner is not even going to make you conscious. Oh. You have to do it yourself. <laughs> so I'm I'm sorry to break it to you, but it's it's going to be a continuous ride. Honestly. Doing things for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and that was when I first moved, like when I was first living by myself, I was like, I think the reality hit that I was living alone was when I was like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. Oh, wait. Only I can feed myself now. Like, if I want to eat, I have to cook. <laughs> so that's when I was like, oh, fuck. Like, this is going to be a regular thing, isn't it? Have you learned new recipes, like, whilst you've lived alone? Or do you, are you a HelloFresh girl? Because <laughs> I've just recently tried HelloFresh and no. That's, really? I'm not a oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, actually, it's funny you say that because, Jesse, we... Mm started um we we thought we'd trial hello fresh this week while jesse yeah. was living with me because we were like oh like we're staying at we're working from home from monday to friday let's try it what are, what are your thoughts i mean it's been pretty 
pretty good so far. Like, mm. I think the only shitty thing, like you said, is if I'm hungry, I have to feed myself. <laughs> So I would also like to mention that a girl still lives at home with her mom. So, and I really, I really milk that, you know, I really, Mm. really milk that. And I'm not even ashamed of it. Like I come home from work and dinner is already made. And all I have to do is like shower and stuff like that. So it's been, it's been an experience for me to like move. Cause like, honestly, like this trip to Adelaide has been quite a like, live like a local more than like a holiday kind of Mm, like a yeah moving out of home experience because like I'm still I'm still working and um all that kind of stuff and like of course we're going out on the weekends and stuff but like yeah it was like you know it's it's lunchtime and I can't just like open the fridge and there's already something there I have like we have to Mm. actually like labor for the for the food Mm. so I think the most annoying part was like because the meals that we got from Hello Fresh were kind of like it was the two person, so it wasn't like a roll like we could cook once and then it would roll over for dinner. It was lunch we would cook and then we would wash everything and then dinner we would cook and then like wash everything. So I think that was the only the only annoying part. But apart like in terms of like the taste and stuff, I think we did a really good job like picking yeah, yeah picking like a really good variety of. Um, like dishes so like we never got sick of anything yeah. oh, but, uh, tell tell everyone about your little hello fresh moment <laughs> <laughs> your little effort <laughs> that oh, but... oh no <laughs> so yeah tell so what so how did how did this happen tell the story uh, <laughs> okay well first of all because you, you're listening to Jesse and I now because we're still alive. Yeah, we're still alive. <laughs> and we're healthy. So I'd just like to preface <laughs> that nobody has endured any illness in the last five days. So we're fine. <laughs> okay. So basically, it was the, because it was my first time um, trying HelloFresh, uh, I haven't, like, you know, done the boxes before, so it's the first box. So it got delivered and then... So what you see online is everyone says, oh, like they just give you the bag and the recipe cards and that's it. And I was like, oh, man, all right. Popped the bags away, looked through the recipe cards. And then there was like a big white bag that was really cold. And I was like, oh, true. They even keep it cold for us, like a big ice pack. Awesome. Anyways, and so I left the ice pack in there and then just kind of left the box there that I was going to use for recycling. And then it comes to Monday and I was like, oh my gosh. Oh no. Yeah. Was it Monday morning? Yeah. 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 So it comes to Monday morning and I was like, oh, I'm so excited to cook today. I just want to have a peep at the ingredients first. So like I take out a recipe card. I'm like, oh, the color's blue. Get the blue bag out. And then I'm looking at the recipe card and I open the the bag bag. and I'm like, Oh, it's missing like everything. Like, where's all the meat? And then, it, <laughs> and then it kind of just clicked to me that I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> and so, like, I run over to the box and I open, like, I snip open this heavy ass ice, like ice pack bag, and all the meat is in there, and all of your sauces, pretty much every single thing you're meant to refrigerate, like the important stuff, is in this bag. And I was like, oh my God, Jesse, Jesse, the meat, the meat, oh. all of that protein. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. We're like, you know, how many hours has this been sitting outside, like in the living room? How cold is it? Like, is it still edible? And so we just chucked it into the fridge and we're like, look, 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 look. let's just, let's just refrigerate it and we'll revisit this topic back when we <laughs> need to cook. And then I think um, we had like a potato taco thing yeah it was pork it was pork mix like pork for our mince. first yeah. meal yeah so like we just like you know opened it up and like gave it a sniff and i was like i mean it smells like it's all right so i guess we'll find out in a few hours so you know we cook our dinner and it's all fine and dandy and i think what did where did we go afterwards we went somewhere else afterwards we were like leaving the house and i had already i had totally forgotten about this leaving the meat outside in room temperature situation okay it was cold it was not room temperature but you had the heater on me she- you had the heater on. Let's be let's let's be honest. Yeah. You had the heater on. And, and and the box is right <laughs> underneath the heater. Yeah, so really, really not optimal. So I think we were like getting ready to leave the house. And then like, you know, I'm like putting my shoes on and stuff. And then she goes to me, Oh hey Jess, like, you know, if you're starting to like feel like, you know, like not okay, like can you just like let me know? And I was like, Oh shit, I forgot about that. Are we going to get food poisoning? I don't know. Like, stay tuned to find out. 
literally having a debate like because there's only one toilet in your apartment mm. i was like because i'm a guest you need to go to your neighbor's <laughs> <laughs> neighbor's house to borrow the toilet because i'm a guest <laughs> well, and let me just say, circling back to my initial statement, we've been here since Friday, like we've been here Monday to Friday and no illnesses. No illnesses and we have. We're healthy. Yeah, we finished all of the HelloFresh recipes, had our last one for lunch and nobody's like crap themselves. So exactly. We're fine. <laughs> Wait, so Mary, why didn't you like it? I just think the recipes were so repetitive and the one... I, I think the rep- recipes actually change every week. Yeah. But it just so happened that the week that I got it, it was not great. Like the choices in recipes. Mm. And like, if I think about it realistically, so when I cook for my partner and I, we have very um, specific tastes. Yeah. Like mm. he is a very chicken oriented person. It's either chicken or pork. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I'll throw in a steak in there, but he's, his like taste buds are very specific and um i like to cook in bulk so that we have something for dinner and then something to take to work the next day and i think hello fresh just doesn't um sort of accommodate for what our needs are Mm. so that's why i feel like if i was to buy hello fresh i'd have to add all these extra ingredients because it just doesn't like taste the way that you want it we're used Mm. to yeah and and in the long run it's 150 dollars per box per week yeah if $150, I can still feed my whole entire family plus my dogs as well. Yeah. But HelloFresh doesn't offer that option for my dogs to eat as well, yeah. if that makes any yeah. sense. So that's why I was like, in the long run, it kind of doesn't make any sense. And if I need to sort of like make breakfast and all that sort of stuff, I have to buy all these extra stuff on top anyway. So it doesn't make any sense for me to buy HelloFresh. Yeah. So no. That's why I didn't really like it. No, nah, that's so fair as well. And I'm like you. But if they yeah. want to... <laughs> if they want to sponsor us. If they want to, like, sponsor us. <laughs> I mean... Actually, I'm don't worry about HelloFresh. It is flavorful. <laughs> I loved it. Actually, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> it did suit my taste buds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i yeah it's just it's it's just not something that i would have for my family mm. if that makes any sense yeah. so so bringing the story back to you mishy <laughs> so now that you're coming up to your one year anniversary in, mm. in radelaide are you planning on staying or are you thinking about heading somewhere else or going back home yeah so actually funny you say that jesse i actually just signed the lease renewal today today um, because my agent kind of emailed me. They were like, we need to know if you want to release it, uh, renew your lease. Um, and for me, I'm definitely not ready to come back to Melbourne yet. I feel like I actually really love Adelaide. Um, and everyone was always so surprised when they find out that I really actually like it. Cause I think they know I used to be really chaotic in Melbourne. And so they're like, who, who are you now? Like, <laughs> what, 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 do you actually you. like it or, <laughs> um, so yeah, but that's not to say I, I don't really know what's going to happen in the future just because I've already had quite a few opportunities with work to move elsewhere. Mm. So The future's really unpredictable for me at the moment, but at least for the next 12 months, I'll definitely be in Radelaide. Radelaide. I think, is it more fun and it's more sort of a novelty to come back to Melbourne because you're not there often and then every time you do come back, (laughs) it's a good time? Like, Honestly? (laughs) (laughs) She's like, not here to get my feelings, but... I really hate coming back to Melbourne. And it's not, it's nothing to do with, like, my friends or anything. But I think because, you know, and I love you, mum and dad. Love you so much. But I cannot live with my family again. Um, I think after living alone and living in my own space and coming back to my family home, um, you know, it's as soon as I'm home, my parents are just like, oh, you please change my password for this. What's my MyGov account? Or, like, I, like they get me to do all of their life admin um, when I'm there. And it's like, I don't mind it. Like, and I appreciate, you know, being there, but I think I just really have enjoyed living in my own space. Um, and also because my social batteries are so low now since moving here, because I spend so much time alone that I find that my social battery drains quite quickly when I'm in Melbourne. So, um, I always get a bit anxious when I come back. Yeah. Cause I just Fair love enough. living in Adelaide so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I am actually surprised coming from you because like I'm very 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 introverted. 
like my percentage of introversion is literally 98%. So there is nobody in the on the planet that I know that is more introverted than I am. And you were like the biggest like yeah. social butterfly that I've ever met. So, you know, like when we first met, you were like this ball of energy just bouncing around the room. So I'm really surprised to hear that you are really enjoying Adelaide where it's so quiet and there's no like, you're not out every weekend and partying till the next day essentially yeah (laughs) well yeah no absolutely I have acknowledged that I become a lot more introverted my social battery like tolerance is really low now and I spend my weekends at the farmer's market and my grandma's (laughs) (laughs) she's wholesome and I'm totally okay with that and I love it (laughs) what are some of the things um that you would recommend for someone who's going to Adelaide like coming to visit or Mm. going to live there like what are the things that you would recommend to them because I haven't been to Adelaide so when I do come down I would love to visit any places that you can recommend yeah well first off if you're coming from Melbourne please keep an open mind Adelaide is not that boring (laughs) um it's uh, some of the feedback that I've gotten from my friends coming here is they'll be like wow you guys have gong cha here that's crazy <laughs> do you have 5g over there what's the time zone <laughs> and <laughs> the culture shock is real and not gonna lie I was definitely the same when I first moved here too when I moved here I was like oh my god there's woolies here that's crazy you have a hoits too (laughs) so um first of all keep an open mind Adelaide is not that bad um definitely check out the wineries as well um Barossa Valley and McLaren Vale are the two main winery regions Barossa Valley is beautiful as well because it's like roads but you also have palm trees on the side so it's very Malibu-y but also winery vineyard vibes um so it's really good if you're into your wines. If you follow MasterChef, we have so many MasterChef restaurants here. So we've got Gaja by Sashi. So he won, I think it was season 10, and I loved him so much. Um, po, everyone knows Po. She's got a market stall at the farmer's market too. Um, and we also have Laura, which I call her the pasta girl, and she's got her pasta restaurants here too. So Jesse and I actually visited one mm. of the restaurants too. Um, I went to go see Poe's stall. Yeah. I was too shy to get a photo. I subconsciously dragged Jesse on a MasterChef expedition. You know, I was like, <laughs> I feel like I'm going on like a tour of like MasterChef yeah. people. <laughs> so if you're really into MasterChef, um, the food here is amazing. I also really love going up to Adelaide Hills. Um, there's a German village called Handorf as well. well. What were your thoughts on it, Jess? It was a lot smaller than I had imagined, but yeah. it gives me like Olinda vibes. Like when you go up to like Daniel, Daniel Mountains, mm-hmm. it's kind of like that, but like, yeah, just more, more German. And we got, we tried, like we went to one of like the restaurants to have like a German, like a sausage, was it a sausage? Like a hot dog? Yeah. yeah a, like A bratwurst. Yeah. Yeah. And that was yeah. really yummy. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I think it was nice because we went during like the autumn time. It oh, it's beautiful in autumn. Really get, gave mm. like the German kind of like, it just was really, really fitting for the theme. So, um, yeah, like definitely yeah. A, a, a good visit. And it's like so close to the city. Like it was only like a 40, 35 minute, 45 minute Yeah. Minutes, and right? that's the thing. These places are so close to the mm. city You can as literally well. accomplish yeah. so much in one day. Yeah, um, and there's a lot you can do if you. There's places that you can go hiking. There's waterfalls. Um, there's galleries here. You've got Rundle Mall, which basically, and you know how in Melbourne you've got the shopping streets. You've like got Swanson, Swanson Street, Collins. Yeah, yeah Adelaide Burke. just has it all condensed in one, and it's just the size of Burke Street. <laughs> Yeah, I literally, I was like to Michelle, I was like, okay, you know, you were going on about how, oh, you know, Adelaide has gong cha too, like, we're not that backwards. And then I go, so, so is there a Zara here? I want to go to Zara, and she's like, oh no, they only have that in the burbs, <laughs> at the in the Westfield in the burbs. I'm like, you guys don't have Zara here? Like, what the heck? <laughs> it's, yeah, why is it not in the CBD? I was like, it's the CBD. I'm like, what the heck? Because we have Uniqlo. <laughs> They're like totally different market, but you know. 
<laughs> same thing. Same thing. They sell clothes. We only have room for a few big ones. Oh, and a H&M. And a yeah, H&M as well. That's it. Listen, I'll, I'll be happy with a Uniqlo if... You, you've sold me. I'm moving to <laughs> She's Adelaide. moving. She's relocating. <laughs> yeah. She's no, buying her farm no, in Adelaide. I reckon you'd really like it here. It's just so chill. I need at least an 800 square meter block of land. Yeah. <laughs> she wants a farm. There's so the much farm. There's so much space here and not many cars on the road. So Jesse actually called me out on this the other day. Because there's no cars on the road, it's just so easy to jaywalk. So I just, I don't even think about it. And I just walk across the road. And Jesse was like... Mish, I realise you you jaywalk quite a bit. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, ah, yeah, I guess I do. (laughs) You just can't do that in Melbourne. You get freaking run over. Like, even when the light is green, you have to look to see if there's any cars because there's just, like, so many retards on the road. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, it's a lot of space. It's a lot of peacefulness, but it's just really wholesome. I have been thinking about it. It's it's an option because I don't like, my friend was like, oh, move to Queensland, it's really cheap and then it's warm up there and, you know, you can get a whole ass mansion for like 900,000 and I was like, I don't like heat. Like, oh, <laughs> I hate summer. Yeah. Like, I hate heat so much. So the only other option is to move sideways. So <laughs> we're going to si- we're gonna sideways walk to Adelaide or, or Perth. Like, it's, you know, we're not moving up. <laughs> if, if you love the cold so Past much, the you might as well just... just- Go to Canberra if, if you love the cold. But there's so nothing much. in Canberra. Yeah, there, there's literally nothing. <laughs> so if you want really wholesome, <laughs> nothing in Canberra. But yeah, maybe anyways. we should do a trip back to Adelaide all together, and then yeah. we can um we can get it we can go to the wineries together, like a wine and dine. I want to go to the sinkhole. Oh yeah, me <laughs> oh, too. Oh, Gambia. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. definitely on the bucket that's list. That's on so the list. Definitely got to come back and then mm-hmm. rent a rent a car. So. Yeah, you, you'll see me again here again, Mish. Just, and that's just fine. FYI. Just that's FYI. totally... Because the reason why Jessie's also here in the first place was because, you know, when we have our catch-ups, I'm like, Jessie, you really just got to get out of Melbourne. Get out of the you'll Melbourne bubble. And, you know, just experience life outside of Melbourne. Experience my lifestyle. <laughs> Be up, be on your own for a little bit, and it'll just be so good for your soul. It really was. It really is. I'm telling you, I found myself. I found myself, sis. And I also picked up some of Mishy's what? catchphrases. Yes. Which she when she says that I'm not I'm not saying you correctly. Didn't even say them right. <laughs> it's hard being you okay. The, the bar is just too high. I just can't be there right now. <laughs> but um Well yeah, I think having said that, because you've lived with her for a week what between the two of you what are the five tips for someone who's moving out of home for the very first time like let's summarize this up for the listeners what are the the best tips that you can give to them moving out for the first time all right jesse how about Mm. you take the first three tips and i'll do the last two (laughs) um with my one week of experience living by myself I really have so much ground to be giving advice on this guys so take it with a grain of salt (laughs) um I think you know when you're moving out by yourself I think it's good to have some sort of like routine and then give like to structure like your day and stuff so that um you're still going about things with a purpose um second tip for moving out is I would say try to keep okay this is the OCD type a thing but I think it's good to like do your chores and stuff kind of like as you go through the day and try to be clean and stuff instead of accumulating things all in one go because I find that quite like Mm. daunting as well so like you know we've been doing our dishes and stuff as we go and um you know cleaning stuff up after we use them and stuff like that and I think that has helped to keep a very a very civil and happy co in like cohabiting kind of environment for the both of us. Cause this is also the first time living, like living with somebody. So if you don't count like me going on holidays or traveling overseas. So I think we- we've never had any issues like mm. living together yeah. and being respectful of each other's space. So yeah, I hope so. Well, I hope I'm, I'm saying that from my point of view, but I don't know if Michelle said, <laughs> I know I'm good to way. live with. But <laughs> <laughs> I've also really enjoyed, yeah, just, like, being by myself and stuff as well. Like, even though, like, we're together and stuff, you know, I've went to, I've gone to the gym by myself and just, like, being in my own space, it's nice to be able to think 
like to yourself like you know like I don't have to worry about like coming home and having to you know like you said tend to my parents or like my Mm. siblings and like even my dog you know I do miss him like very very much but like having having literally to not look after anybody else but myself is a very enlightening feeling um yeah only having to worry about like myself and what I want to do and what I want to achieve in the day like it's quite it's a quite a, a different aspect on life I guess you could say so I definitely think it's a very enriching experience that I would like to redo again so um mm-hmm. yeah I'm I'm definitely looking forward to moving out of home but I will still milk my mom <laughs> <laughs> for for the stuff that she does for me while I can I'll enjoy it while I can <laughs> what about you Mishy? um I would say a top tip that I find really useful um for moving out, and for me I'm a person who really loves my routine and that's also part of the reason why I get so anxious when I go to Melbourne is because when I go to Melbourne it throws me off my routine and so I get really restless and anxious when I'm not in there so when I have to come back to Adelaide I have to just go straight into it um so in saying that I plan my week ahead so that I'm not um because I work because I work full time and I'm also still studying on the side and I go to the gym I don't have time to really think about things and I just want I'm just quite efficient just kind of quick in and out so how I structure my weeks is that on Saturdays I'll kind of do my meal plan and I'll think about what I want to eat during the week what meals and then I'll write my shopping list and then I'll either do my grocery shopping on Saturday or the Sunday and then Sunday will be my meal prep day so I'll meal prep for the week as well and that way it's kind of just all there for the week so that really helps if you're working full-time and you're just really busy and on the go during the week because then you just don't even have to think about it and it's all there for you um my last tip would just oh and then also um when you have it all set out for you you don't even have to think about it and like you don't have to spend more money on food or like when if you don't have any meals you're not going out to buy food um my last tip honestly a coffee machine seriously invest in in a coffee machine get a coffee machine I have probably only purchased like four cups of coffee since I've been here because I make amazing coffees at home it's (laughs) it's <laughs> so good I can vouch I can vouch for them yeah but apart from that I guess everyone has their own ways of moving out and living on their own um, if you're living by yourself then kind of just be mentally prepared um, f- one for your huge wave of independence that you're going to get but two sometimes you may feel a bit lonely um, depending on if you're still living in the same city or outside the city it's easier if you're in the city you can kind of just go see your friends but um, But yeah, and just really enjoy, use that time to kind of get to know yourself more because I've learned so much more about myself since moving out too. Um, But yeah, what about you, Mary? Because you've moved out too. What are are your tips? Yeah, I definitely agree with the structure thing. I am such a type A person. I plan everything right down to all the tasks that I do on a daily basis and um, things that like projecting like the next two weeks ahead like I'm like meal planning for you know um coming events and all that sort of stuff so I'm always structuring um but I didn't really move out by myself I kind of moved in with my partner so I kind of took on you know all the house chores on his end as well so um for me I think the number one thing was realizing that I had to go and now buy my own toilet paper, buy my own, you know, detergents um, (laughs) and all these other things, like things that I had never considered before, like even just paying for council rates. Um, Obviously, you're living, um, you're, you know, leasing out an apartment so you don't have to consider those things but we actually live in a house that he it's um he's bought and so all these bills like you know you've got a mortgage to pay you've got council rates to pay you've got water rates and then water usage and then gas and electricity and internet and all that sort of stuff and if something goes wrong or awry then you sort of have to figure it out yourself whereas like when you're living at home um yeah that was, you know, sort of dealt with by your parents. But now it's kind of like with uh, anything, yeah. if something is wrong or if you've missed a payment, then you just have to consider the fact that you may or not have may or may not have gas or electricity or water connection for a month if you don't pay those bills. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was something that was kind of like a 
not a big shock, but was like a, a wake up call for me because um, during the pandemic, like I, I literally moved in with him right at the start of a pandemic. Um, and, you know, he for a short period of time uh, wasn't working. So I was the sole income for our household. And I was like, oh my God, like, how am I supposed to make these payments? Like, I couldn't even live off my own salary before. Now I have to service a mortgage and all that sort of stuff. So like, yeah, that was my biggest sort of, I guess, wake up call. And now Mm. um, (laughs) Jesse will be proud of me to hear this. But this week, I actually created a spreadsheet that you enter in like, the paycheck like the amount that you get on your paycheck into the spreadsheet and it breaks down exactly how much to move into each account so um I don't know if you've read the book uh barefoot yeah investor? the barefoot investor so yeah, yeah, yeah. he breaks it down mm-hmm. where it's like 60 percent of your um salary your, your paycheck comes in and that 60 percent is like your expenses and then 20 percent is your emergency money 10 percent is splurge and then 10 percent into savings right so I literally use the same method and I use this spreadsheet and it like calculates exactly how much to put away where it all goes and I was like to my partner I'm like you need to start using this spreadsheet because we have a financial goal to make by the end of next financial year and if you don't make it I'm gonna be very angry (laughs) 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 so yeah like yeah structure is number one tip um and just be prepared to, I guess, I don't know. I'm, I'm very used to my own, like, personal space and, like, being on, on my own. I love being on my own. So that, for me, wasn't really an issue. Um, but because I'm spending the time in someone else's, like, personal space as well, that was something that, for me, was a little bit different um, because I'd never lived with somebody else other than my own family. So, Yeah. I think be prepared to have difficult conversations is all I have to sort of give. (laughs) And I think that brings us to the end of this episode. So thank you so much, Mish, for sharing your stories and your experience with us. And if you've got any questions or comments about this week's episode, we would love to hear from you. Reach out to us on our Instagram page at messyminds.podcast and that's messy with an I-E. If you're enjoying our show, please give us a rate and review on whatever platform you're tuning in on. Be sure to tune Tune in with us again next week for our final episode of season one. Until then, this is Mary. And this is Jessie. And this is Michelle. And don't forget to declutter your messy minds. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>